right, we are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our fourth and final segment. And that is going to be just uh, some quick uh, news around the league, what's going on there, and uh, what are some stories I want to talk about. So uh, the first story we're going to talk about is Eric Hosmer and what's going on uh, there. Not, not, not what's going on there. Yeah, he retired. I think it's pretty clear what's going on there. Nothing, because he retired. Uh, so he is retired. He announced his retirement after 10 MLB seasons. He is going to... Uh, starting baseball a media company and is starting a baseball podcast um just a quick overview of Hosmer's career he as a one-time all-star in the one all-star game he did make he won an MVP in it he's a world series champion with the uh, Kansas City Royals four-time gold glove winner and a silver slugger winner when he was playing he was considered one of the better defending first basemen in the game um was a vacuum over there and while first base defense isn't that isn't that important having someone like Hosmer who could hit and do both was very important so in his prime, he was a very good player for the Royals and uh, made them a lot better team and was a big reason for winning the uh, World Series, especially with his uh, uh, base running, with his, uh, you know, how uh, aggressive he was. Um, he signed a big contract with the Padres. Did not work out very well. He's, he's kind of famous on the Internet for being a meme because we all thought he was going to hold up the Juan Soto trade after he declined to uh, get traded to uh, he declined to get traded to uh, Washington for Soto and said he got rerouted to uh, Boston after. But yeah, it didn't work out very well with the uh, Padres. Signed a big contract there, just not good. But he was always a well-respected player, it seemed like. When he was traded from the Padres, a lot of uh, players were kind of outraged. They were mad They, you know, because he was a leader for them, a good guy. So uh, game lost a good guy, but still a very nice career for Eric Hosmer. Um, I just going to talk about this. I have to. Um, I'm a Mets fan, so uh, Hosmer ruining my uh, 2015 was not very fun. He was one of the main reasons we lost that World Series in five in embarrassing fashion because of his uh, base running. So not uh, was not a fun year for uh, 10-year-old me, but um, I'm, hap- I'm happy that he had a nice career, uh, all bias aside, and I'm happy that he is reti- um, retiring uh, in a Good shape, not injured, and uh, had a nice career, so uh, props to him. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Next, we are going to talk about some pitching injuries here. And the first one is a big blow, I think, that went under the radar today, and that's Keaton Wynn from the San Francisco Giants. Now, if if you watch my videos, you know yesterday I mentioned Keaton Wynn as a X-factor for the Giants season. I'm very high on him. I think he has one of the better off-speed pitches in the game. Um, I think his changeup is very, very deadly. I think he was going to have a breakout season this year. And you look at just what's going on with the Giants right now. You have Jordan Hicks, who's a big question mark, has a lot of potential, but it's a very low floor because you are changing a 103-mile-per-hour relief pitcher to a starting pitcher. You're stretching him out. So that's a very um, interesting scenario, what's going to go on with there, what's going, go, what's going to go on with that, sorry, and how that's going to work. Um, so you have Robbie Ray, who they traded for, who's going to be out the first half of the season, probably longer with uh, his Tommy John recovery. And you have Alex Cobb, who also got injured and is probably also going to be out in the first half. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think Keaton Wynn was going to be a major part of that rotation. You had guys like Logan Webb, who was the bona fide ace. You had Jordan Hicks, who, assuming everything goes to plan, there would probably slot in as the number two to start. You had Keaton Wynn, probably going to be the number three. I thought was going to be a very big part of that Giants team, Giants organization, and what they were going to do because of the pitching injuries. Um, so I do think this is kind of a big blow for the uh, Giants. He is hurt. They, he has elbow soreness. Um, the MRI revealed no structural damage. We don't know what the long-term outlook is for him. But I see he could be ready for opening day, but we have to face reality. When pitchers get elbow soreness, it's never a good sign. Never. Even though MRI didn't, MRI didn't reveal anything too serious. Elbow soreness or anything with your elbow when, when you're a pitcher is not good ever. You cannot, no, nothing good can happen with that. So I would be a little cautious if I'm a Giants fan. But, um, you know, I'm hoping for the best for him. I think he can have a breakout season, be a real big uh, impact for the uh, Giants and what goes on with that. So, um, yeah, let's just hope for Giants fans' sake and for his, uh, for Keaton Wynn's sake that he is all good and he will be uh, healthy. Next, we're going to talk about another pitching injury, as I said uh, before. My Mets, uh, Kodai Senga, he has arm fatigue already in spring training, and uh, the Mets are going to reevaluate him. 
and he's talking to trainers, so we'll look for an update on that. This is not good. It's very worrying as a Mets fan, even though this is small. The Mets, um, we just kind of just curse franchise. I mean, any, anything small that happens, it always gets blown up into bigger proportions, and um, it's never good. Um, Senga had a lot of arm issues over in Japan, even though he was very good. He had some injury risks. A lot of people don't remember this, but his contract took a while to get uh, finalized because um, he had an issue in the physical. The Mets did bring it down, and last year obviously went fine. He was one of the better pitchers in baseball, as I would say undeniably the best pitch in baseball with the ghost fork. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that's all good with Senga. It probably is. Maybe I'm overreacting, but as a Mets fan, you're kind of uh, programmed to uh, see the worst in things with uh, baseball and the team. So I'm hoping he uh, is okay. I'm hoping arm fatigue is it's okay right now and everything's all right with that. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really hopeful that it's not too big of a deal. And if it is, it's a huge blow to the Mets because their ace would then be Jose Quintana, which uh, is not an ace you really want to have uh, if you're trying to make the, make the playoffs. So, yeah, uh, I think it's something to watch in the next few days with Senga and what goes on with that. Um, and, yeah, it's just a... Bad scenario for me. Uh, next, we have Gary Sanchez and the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, this was kind of a uh, interesting thing with uh, baseball. He signed a contract with the Brewers for one year, $7 million, around a week ago, and nothing ever happened since. He was not spotted in camp, nothing about when the physical would be or um, if uh, the deal was getting finalized. But we know now what happened. He finally got the contract finalized. He is going to sign with the Brewers be uh, some depth to uh, th- bring some depth to the DH and catcher roles with the Brewers behind uh, William Contreras. He had an elbow with his uh, wrist. He has a pro- he had a problem with his wrist in the uh, medical, sorry, and that's what held up the deal. Um, the Brewers uh, lowered the uh, guarantees on it, and they just matched stuff around. But they still got him. They still wanted him as a player. They still thought he was important to bring in. So. Um, yeah, this happens a good amount. We saw it with uh, James Paxton with the Dodgers. As long as the injury, injury isn't season-ending or anything like that, it's usually going to get done because if the team signs the player in the first place, that means they want him. And if they want him, it's going to take something uh, very serious for them to uh, completely back out. I mean, Obviously, the most recent case we have of this is two teams doing it with Carlos Correa, and that was obviously a big deal. We, we'll see how that ages in the future and see if uh, the Mets and Giants were uh, wrong and the Twins are correct or uh, vice versa. So. Next, we have something that's uh, un- very interesting, Sixto Sanchez. Uh, Sixto Sanchez is kind of a forgotten name in baseball uh, world. He was a big part of the uh, JT Romuto trade to the Phillies, was a big-time prospect with the uh, Phillies. They traded him to the Marlins for Romuto, was a top pitching prospect, pitched great in 2020 with the Marlins, uh, had them get that surprise uh, playoff run. But um, since then, has kind of been a mystery. He's had some visa issues, some personal issues, injuries, and he kind of she showed up back in camp today. And he, um, to put it lightly, he puts he looks uh, very different. He's uh, put on some pounds, we'll say. Um, you know, I think it's um, an interesting scenario what's going to go on with him. Um, you know, he doesn't look at in shape. His fastball was pretty nice in camp, they said, but his secondary stuff was not very effective at all. So I don't think he's going to be back, going to be back, going to be the sixth of Sanchez we all remember that was really good that showed a lot of potential so yeah I just don't think um he's a big part of the Marlins future anymore he could be a fine reliever if he gets maybe one secondary pitch down with that fastball and gets into shape because he is not in shape right now at all anyone with two eyes can see that so yeah I think something to watch when we go for some training and for the future with the Marlins and what's going to go on with them and um how six of Sanchez rebounds and what his career looks like from uh, now on uh, R.A. Dickey, finally. That's not a name we've talked about in a while, but he is in camp today with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, before I start, I actually made a short on this for our YouTube channel, so if you want to check that out, uh, just go to the short section of the channel when you're done watching this, and you can uh, watch a little 40-second clip. But I'll expand on my uh, thoughts about it further. So uh, it's just a fun little thing, R.A. Dickey coming to uh, the camp of his former team, the Blue Jays, um, former Cy Young winner, of course, one of the better knuckleballers in baseball history probably up there with Phil Necro as the best. Um, so, yeah, he apparently was teaching Blue Jays players today the knuckleball and how to work it, and I think it would be really fun if another player could learn the knuckleball and be effective with it and kind of have it as their main pitch. Um, knuckleballers in baseball are super fun. Um, I mean, 
Mickey Giannis, probably the most recent example we have. We had Matt Waldron in the game today, who is a, a big knuckleballer, but we don't know how effective he's going to be um, because it's kind of not his main pitch. But he's still he's still a good player, most likely. He's um, and he's kind of the only knuckleballer we have in the league right now. But R. A. Dickey coming to uh, Jay's camp, teaching some of the players, makes me hopeful for the uh, knuckleball's future and what's going to go on with it. So um, yeah, I think. Uh, Something really interesting to watch to see if um, Blue Jays fan Blue Jays players do get a knuckleball, and uh, they uh, decide to make it a big part of their repertoire, and maybe it makes a comeback in baseball. I'm probably just uh, overthinking all of this, uh, most likely, but it's something to talk about. It's something nice, something cool. As a Mets fan, I love R.A. Dickey. Um, you know, it's great for us. Obviously, won us won us a Cy Young, got us Noah Syndergaard in a trade. So, uh, yeah, always seemed like a cool guy. Over, overcame a lot of uh, struggles in his personal life. Um, so, and to be a major league pitcher, especially with, uh, you know, he didn't have a part of his body that you need for pitching. If you look up his story, I believe this is 30 for 30 on him. It's very interesting just what happened with him and his whole story of getting to the big leagues with the Rangers as a top draft pick and then having the transition to be a knuckleballer because of the missing limb, which is insane. It's some rare condition, so... Very interesting story and how he became a knuckleballer and just his career in general. So, uh, yeah. Um, just to recap a little bit for uh, the news around the uh, league. Eric Hosmer, nice career um, in baseball, is retiring. Um, was an, is a former All-Star Game MVP, World Series champion, four-time Gold Glove, Silver Slugger winner. Um, pain in the side of the Mets fans. So, uh, nice career for him and uh, he is retiring. Uh, Keaton Wynn. Big blow to the uh, Giants if this is serious with his injury, elbow soreness. Um, again, MRI revealed some good things, but got to always be careful with elbows for uh, pitchers and players in general. Gary Sanchez finally getting his uh, contract done with the Brewers. So uh, that's nice for our Brewers fans and himself getting uh, his payday. So good for him. Uh, Kodai Senga has uh, some arm fatigue and is dealing with some issues right now in camp. Not good because of his injury past, but I'm hopeful that he uh, can get past it and become a really good pitcher even uh, and get past the injury situation and uh, lead the Mets to a uh, playoff spot. Sixo Sanchez needs to get in shape again. Um, we talked about this. He is not in shape right now. He needs to be. And uh, R.I. Dickey, teaching some kid players the knuckleball. What else can you ask for? That's the American dream if you're a baseball player, getting top dead knuckleball by R.I. Dickey. That would be great. I would love to learn knuckleball. And uh, hopefully the knuckleball makes a uh, return to uh, baseball. We can only hope. So that was it for our show today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, it really means a lot to us, uh, you you know, for watching, uh, donating, commenting. Uh, Bush, uh, Bush1G uh, from uh, Twitch, I see you. So thank you for the uh, comment. What's up to you as well? Um, so, yeah, um, that was it for our show. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the other platforms. Um, I'll see you tomorrow, same time, as always, Mondays and Fridays. Check out our other content as well. Check out the shorts. So uh, thank you so much for uh, watching and uh, listening, and uh, see you uh, again. Bye. <laughs>